So on the on the, we're talking about case insensitive correlation here, right? Case insensitive queries. Oftentimes, when you're working with databases, you want to do it in a case insensitive way. Make sense? Looking for names. I don't want to have to know the person's exact name, right? Maybe it's Fred with all uppercase letters. Maybe it's Fred with an uppercase F. Maybe they put it in as all lowercase. But I still want to be able to type in Fred in any case, and all the Freds appear, right? So oftentimes we need we need um, to be able to do um, queries that are case insensitive. Um, so one of the ones she, she mentions here, you can do this with regex. Do not use regex. It is really slow and really inefficient. Okay, don't use regex if you need case insensitive. Do not do that. It will slow your database. It will slow your application down to a crawl. Okay, so she mentioned using correlations. Uh, collations are the right answer, and they're the way you want to do things. Um, collations are interesting. Okay? Collations say, how do I say these characters are kind of the same character? Is basically where they stand. How do I sort the the text? Okay. Now, one of the things with collation that gets interesting is collations are language specific. Collations are language specific. So, it, for instance, I can have the correlation be English or Spanish or Russian or Chinese. Um, but the way I sort, if I'm working with text, the way I sort and the way I compare that text actually depends on the language of text that you're working with. Are you tracking with me there? The way I work with that text depends on what language we're working with. So when I specify a correlation, I have to specify the language. I may have to specify the country, and we also get in here and we can specify a strength. Okay? So I specify a collation, it's a combination of language, country, and strength. Okay? So the language would be like English or Spanish, etc. It's always a two-letter code. Okay? Uh, similarly with a country, it's also a two-letter code. Why does that matter? Well, because you have things like US English and British English and Australian English. Not exactly the same. Uh, rules are similar, but not exactly the same. Similarly, you have Mexican Spanish and Spain Spanish, right? And so the rules are different oftentimes from country to country, even if they're speaking the same language, okay? Third part is the strength. So strength says, how close do things have to be for you to consider those two strings as being the same string? How close do they have to be? Okay, so let's take a look at the documentation because the question was here, um, what do these strengths three, four, and five mean? So MongoDB collation strength. Okay, so in fact, there's quite a few more here you can specify. Um, when you're creating a collation, you got little cal, etc. Case level, case first, strength, etc. Um, so there are a lot of variables that you can specify in the collation. But the main ones we're focusing on locale. Locale is the um, combination of the uh, language plus the country, and then the strength here, which is an integer. Okay. So if we look at the strength. There's a table here, and I'll, I'll link this in Discord so everybody has a, has a saved link to it. Okay, so there's a table here about what the strength means. Okay. And so what was mentioned in the video is that strength 1 and 2 are case insensitive. If you set the strength to 1 or 2, it'll be case insensitive. If I remember right, though, the norm is... Uh, yeah, it says here. So the default strength is three. Okay, this is the default behavior is three, which means that it is case sensitive. Okay, so a lowercase letter and an uppercase letter are treated differently. And if you try to do EQ and compare them, you're not going to find it if the case doesn't match exactly. Is the norm. Okay, so let's look at what it says, because um, honestly, I find these. These can be pretty confusing, especially if you're not that familiar with the nuances of different languages. Okay, so let's look and see what it says. Um, 
Number one, it says primary level of comparison. Collation performs comparisons of the base characters only, ignoring other differences such as diacritics and case. Okay, so at level one, we ignore diacritics and case. Okay, case we kind of understand. We have lowercase and we have uppercase letters. Um, it's worth noting that in some languages, namely some versions of Russian uh, and, and other languages in that space, Bulgarian and such, the lowercase letter and the uppercase letter are sometimes different letters entirely. Um, so if you make something lowercase or you make something lowercase, uppercase, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one conversion. Okay? Sometimes there's multiple ways to do that. Also in, I believe we ran into an issue I can't remember what language it was specifically, but it was a different character when you went into italics as well. Okay, um, So those are things to consider. Diacritics um, are something that happens in other language besides English um, is the short answer. Okay, um, There are other languages that have these diacritics. They're basically additional marks on the character that change how the character sounds in general, okay, or changes what that character means. Um, so for us, if you're maybe when you're initially learning about how to say some letters, you might have seen um, this idea, a dot, right, and so those symbols on top tell you how to pronounce it. Okay? We don't typically include those in English today. Um, but some languages do that, do that very thing, to change how the language sounds. Uh, so, for instance, in German, we have uh, the two dots, which represents an umlaut, and changes how you pronounce the letter. Right. So, a U without an umlaut sounds different than with a U with an umlaut. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about diacritics. Okay. Additional marks, circles, dots lines, etc., that are added onto the characters. So by default, if we're in strength three, these characters are not equal because they have different diacritics. Does that make sense? They have different diacritics. So if we set the strength to one, then these two characters are considered as the same character. Okay. What does 2 say? So 2 says second level of comparison. Collation performs comparison up to second differences such as diacritics. That is, collation performs comparisons of base characters and diacritics depending on between base characters take presence over secondary. Okay, so in level 1, these characters, umlau, and you, these would be equal at strength one. Okay? At strength one, those would be equal. At strength two, these are not equal. Okay? And strength two, they're not equal. Um, it ignores case, but it doesn't ignore diacritics. Uh, at case at level two, we'd also see uh, u with an uppercase is equal to u. Does it mean that the difference between base characters? So the base character here is the u. Is the u. So in this case, at strength two, an uppercase character is considered the same as a lowercase character, um, but a character with or without the umlaut is not equal. Does that make sense? Most of the time, if you're looking for a case insensitive care, case insensitive comparison for searches and things like that that you're thinking of, you're probably thinking of strength one. Most of the time, strength one is the one you want for case insensitive. But you kind of have to recognize that there's a difference, right? So strength one doesn't, it, it completely ignores diacritics, but strength two considers them. Okay? 
um, if we're looking at strength three, tertiary level, um, at that point, at tertiary level, it considers all of the different. It considers all those differences we talked about. So differences in the base character, A, U, etc., are basic alphabet differences, diacritics, and differences in case. All of those are considered as different characters. Does that make sense? And basically, in an English space, that's really all we would deal with. If you're just dealing with English or most um, European European languages. One, two, and three is all you'll ever learn. Okay? So four and five are only things that occur when you're dealing with non-European, non-Latin text. Does that make sense? Four and five are only for things that are specifically occur in non-Latin text. 